welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV. I'm here with a very, very special guest. He is the former Newcastle left back. He is Jose Enrique. Jose, welcome to Newcastle Fans TV. Thank you very much. Thank you. How are you? Good? Very, very good. Very good. Let's start with, obviously, way back in 2007, Jose, you came in uh, from Villarreal, which yeah. obviously did very well at for that one season. And you come to Newcastle. Was, was Newcastle your only option at the time, Jose, or... Was it just the Premier League in general? You wanted to try and see, can you come like to compete with the big boys, essentially? Well, listen, now that I'm a football legend, I don't know if you knew, I, I can't tell you. <laughs> when, when, when people say players have, uh, oh, this guy have 10 teams to choose that. Most of the time, obviously, if he's Messi or if he's a player like that, yeah, it's true. You know, obviously, they have, they can go whatever they want, but normal players call it that way. Uh, <laughs> You know, like at the end, yeah, I have so many teams asking for me. Uh, Barcelona, I remember Guardiola even got in touch with, you know, the club. Barcelona got in touch with my brother asking about my situation and everything. Villarreal say, say so many clubs got in touch with us about you. But the reality at the end is what I always say. Yeah, you can ask about me. Every club asks about players every single day. But at the end, what the most important is, is someone come with the money to pay the transfer that you cost. And you know what I mean? And at the end, that was Newcastle. That was Newcastle. Uh, they came, obviously, it was a big step for me. Even Villarreal was a big club. And they, they played the semi final of the Champions League the year before. At the end, you can compare. I know by history, I know my qualities as well, the type of way I play. Well, I used to play, obviously. Uh, it fit England as well, uh, quite well. And it was a good chance for me to move. I know Newcastle was a big team with big fans, you know, uh, the city, the city was really good. You know, the fans are beautiful. You know, I know for experience now, but even before that, uh, I know it, it was nice. So it was a no brainer really that, uh, then as well, I, I, I remember to be honest, uh, not many people know about this. I remember because, uh, the, I think it was Mark Ashley who sent his own private jet to, to pick me from Valencia to, to, to go to wow. Newcastle. And before I got on the plane, Manchester City called my brother because my brother was my agent, was the old yeah. owner. No, wasn't this owner. It was the owner from before. And they say, listen, we, we want you here. Uh, I don't know how much Newcastle is paying. We just read in the news. They want you, but we want you here and I'm sure we can improve the offer, blah, blah. And I said, listen, I'm a type of person that when I say yes to something is yes, I'm not go back as well. In that time, obviously you can compare Newcastle with Manchester City. Obviously now Manchester City has spent so much money and, and they are up there, you know, but obviously in that time it wasn't that way. So I say, listen, as well, even if it was the opposite way, I say yes to them. I'm a, a man of my word, so I'm going to Newcastle. And I just got on the plane and went there. And, and obviously, it was beautiful. It was beautiful for years. Obviously, the first at the start was difficult, but it was beautiful. It's beautiful. I have. I'm so grateful to Newcastle. To be honest, so grateful. I'm glad to hear that. Of course, when you first came in, Jose, obviously Sam Allardyce was the manager. Um, and was English football the way you expected? Did you think it would be different? Did you think it'd be maybe even more physical, or did you just feel comfortable quite quickly? How long do you think it took you to kind of be? What's the word? to English football? I believe, look, <clears throat> for experience now as well, I believe that young players, uh, it's difficult that they make impact straight away. Yeah, it's a lot of young players, they're really good, but go to a big team, because Newcastle is a big team, to go there and do well straight away, change country, change language and everything. Yeah, it's people that go and make impact straight away. I'm not saying no, obviously it is. But I was 21. It was difficult for me at the start, to be honest. It was Albert Luque there with me at the start, the first two weeks. Uh, so it was good because obviously he showed me the city, he showed me everything. I will always be grateful to him. He, he told me about the players, he told me about the club. Uh, obviously, he left after that. He didn't finish very well with the club. Um, <laughs> and then obviously after that, you, you see yourself obviously on your own there because in that time was in Spanish players in Newcastle or Spanish speaking. Then obviously the year after year because Colocini and Jonas arrived. But that year it wasn't that way. So it took me a while. It took me a while. And to be honest, they even Newcastle, not many people know this as well. They wanted to sell me on the summer. Uh, Kevin Keegan wanted to sell me. Uh, I had an offer from Betis to go and that was like a wake-up call for me i said well listen i'm not going i'm gonna stay 
I don't like to leave business on the, you know, on the or halfway. So I don't want people to have that impression. I know I have the qualities to really do well here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that. And obviously, I stand. Then they sack Kevin, uh, they sack uh, Kevin Keegan a week after they change the manager. Obviously, that season we played in the Premier League. It's the season we relegate. I think I did okay. I wasn't wasn't my best season, but I did okay. And then in the Championship, really is when when I start to to grow as a player in England, completely used to it and very happy there in terms of I knew the language better, I could understand people more. So to me, it took me a year and a half or something like that to get used to because of the age and because of obviously it wasn't anyone to speak the, the language. Yeah, yeah. It was difficult. Yeah. I can imagine. And you've mentioned obviously just even a couple of managers and and obviously we're talking a year and a half, you kind of just think feeling your way into football in England. But you've, taught, you've had Sam Allardyce, you've had Kevin Keegan, you've had Joe Kinnear, you've had all sorts of different managers. And Newcastle did end up ultimately get relegated. But did you feel that the club was just a mess, really, for the first two years at your time at Newcastle? Because there was just not enough, I, I might even say there was not enough professionalism when you look back at it now. Well, at the end, that's the, I always say that uh, at the end is the club's decision what they do with the manager or not. At the end, I wasn't good enough myself. I wasn't good enough uh, for the club in that moment. They signed me for a good, um, very good amount of money for a young player. Uh, and, and obviously, I didn't perform the, the way I should. Obviously, about the managers, is the club's decision. I remember the first training that was funny because uh, I remember I passed the ball to Nicky Bat with Sam Allardyce and he lost the ball after five seconds or three seconds, something like that. And we received a goal in training. He said, Jose, stop, stop. Say, no, no, the ball not to the midfield, the ball behind the, the fullback or the centre back. You know, it's like English football, proper wow. English football. And obviously I wasn't used to that. In Villarreal, you play with the midfield, you play with the winger, you go overlap, you think so. Obviously, it's, it's completely different. And as a young player, you don't have that es that experience, that's the reality. Uh, and like I say, it was important as well that it wasn't any Spanish speaking. So really, I was training, going home. Uh, I'm a quiet, jokey guy all the time in the dressing room or anything like that. So you don't have that because obviously you don't speak the language. Even I have so many players that treat me so well, like Marvi Duca or Femi Martins, you know, like Joey Barton, like so many players that they were so good to me, Andy as well, Andy Carroll, so good to me from the start. And we couldn't understand each other, but I don't know how. At the end, we have good feeling <laughs> between each other and, and it was nice. But it was difficult. It was difficult at the start. And it's nothing to do with the managers. It was my mistake. I wasn't good enough at the start. And that's all. That's all. Yeah, it's, I think I think obviously it was, it was from a fan's point of view, I think it was just a collective where... I think the club just needed the. I know that sounds stupid, but they needed the relegation to kind of reset the buttons and just start again and get Newcastle to back in the Premier League and back to you know competing. And I hope you're sitting comfortably because it is edge of the seat time. Four teams, two relegation places. And right now, Newcastle United occupy one of them. Down to Barry. Oh, a little deflection. Gareth Barry may claim the goal but it certainly flicked someone on the way through and Harper was beaten how costly is that Newcastle United and the Premier League this is where it ends Newcastle United are relegated everyone talks about that pre-season game Jose against Leighton Orient um, I know I knew you I knew you were going to ask me about that <laughs> <laughs> because I mean. it's because oh, oh, from this from that moment on it just seemed to be obviously from from your for your time at Newcastle from that moment it just got better and better and better and you look what happened after that game what was the biggest thing that changed for Newcastle at for that me, point for me it's a lot of rumors about it and some of them are true and that's the right and i'm gonna <laughs> tell you which ones they are uh, what, what, it, what it happens i believe that we relegate and the club uh, obviously you still have the help from the premier league when you relegate more money than any other championship teams uh, and obviously the club uh, in that moment what they wanted to do is go back to the to the premier league so they believe that keeping the team from the premier league with the quality players we have like michael owen or martin this type of players you want to walk just through the championship and promote, you know what I mean? And at the end, he realized in precision that so many players, mentally-wise, they didn't want to stay. They weren't happy to play in the championship. 
And, and like you say, after this game, they realize that, okay, it's time to change something because we are not going in a good way. We're not doing a good precision. They just fucking kill us right now in this game. And it's something to change. It's something to change. So whoever does, we have a meeting with the board, the players as well. That was really good from you, Barton, Andy Carroll, obviously big personalities in the race, Kevin Nolan, big personalities in the dressing room um, in that time. To say, listen, guys, whoever do, with the board included, whoever doesn't want to stay, obviously, is completely respectful because at the end, everyone can decide their future, you know, what they want to do. But listen, we speak with the board and say, listen, whoever doesn't want to stay, you sell them. And just the people that want to stay and fight to come back where Newcastle deserves, let's stay. A result for us that we never saw coming. It's been a, a very good pre-season so far. Um, the games that we've played, plus the training, we had a, a, a quite a tough training week this week. Um, the most important thing for us is that we, we put that one behind us. But certainly we didn't see it coming, and um, you know you got to give them credit. I certainly don't think it was a, a six-one result, but um, not good enough from us. And there isn't really anything pleasing that I saw today. Uh, Chris was was key for us, I believe, as well. Chris Hutton was key uh, was key for us because I believe that team was broken. Like you could see in that position, was completely broken uh, in terms of. As together in the in the, in the, on the pitch, to be honest, because outside we have a good relationship, to be honest, the players. But on the pitch, I don't know why we couldn't fit together. And then since that game, we have that chat with the board, then we just have a chat with the players, just us. Some players they recognize it, they didn't want to stay, they weren't happy. They speak with the club, the club put them on the uh, on the side. They didn't even train with us, and and just we stayed the players that we wanted to to stay. Uh, I had an offer from La Liga. But like I said to you before, uh, when it happens to the Betis team, same thing. It was my one. I was one of the parts of the mistakes because at the end, the ones who we play on the pitch is us, the players. And it was it was my mistake as well. Obviously, like any other player, to relegate that team. And I feel like I wanted to 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 combat there, and I didn't want to come back to Spain and have the feeling that because I knew as well, if I come back to Spain, I will never have the chance to come back to the Premier League again because obviously you fell. So I say I'm gonna stay and I'm gonna put this team where 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 they deserve. I'm gonna help. I'm gonna give obviously my 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 hundred percent to to help this team. And I believe Chris as well got that team. He got a big personality and he's everyone you ask. He's such a nice guy, Chris, and he's an amazing manager as well. And he was so important to us because he put a team that was completely broke. He put he put us all together, all together again, and we fight for the same thing. And to be honest. It looks, I know, from outside, easy. Like we win the league, like very, very easy. But it wasn't like that. We training so hard. We play every game like crazy. You guys, the fans, they were amazing at home and away from home as well. It was like playing the Premier League really because it was full all the time. So between all of us, you know, counting the players, the club, and the fans, all of us, uh, we did combat this team where they deserve in the Premier League. I still believe that they are not where they deserve. I believe. Newcastle should be a top six team. That's my opinion, and it's always been. That's why I left, um, and and that's all really. That's all. Yeah, I've, you touched about brilliantly about Chris Hutton and the, the championship season. We'll go in a bit more depth than that now, and you look at the beginning of that season where Newcastle just were, were quite comfortable. They're winning obviously a lot of games, and obviously confidence grew. But you talk about the importance of Chris Hutton, and did he just give you that confidence, Jose? To you know. Use your strengths. Like I thought, your biggest strength was obviously your your attacking displays. You, you had that partnership with Jonas Gutierrez, which you mentioned, and obviously a, a, big, a big friend for you as well. Um, how crucial was that relationship with with Jonas and obviously the management of Chris Hutton? Because he just seemed to get you a hundred percent. Well, you have to. When you when you realize, to be honest, when you when you are your a young player, you don't think that much in managers. You believe that you go to the pitch, you do your own thing, and, and that's all. And when you grow older, you realize even more how important is a manager because at the end, is is the one who who really built the team. Look at Liverpool right now. Yeah, Liverpool has always been a, a top team for me. I'm sorry, but it's the best team in the world, and it is. It is because <laughs> they won the cup. Um, but but you know, it's like. It's like that. Club, for example, changed everything in Liverpool. That's the reality. Then they sang good players and everything. And obviously, yeah, Van Dijk, Alisson, yeah. But in Newcastle, it's the same. In that time, look, we have, in terms of players, we have worse team than the year in the Premier League. We, we don't have Fabian Martins, Michael Owen, Marvin Duca, 
You know what I mean? So at the end, you look at the place and you say, well, and then Andy Carroll promoting from the second team, like, and you say, well, Nile Ranger as well and everything. And, and you say, oh, and this team promote. And it was easy. No, it wasn't easy. I'm telling you, the championship is like the Premier League too. It was very difficult. Uh, Chris Hutton was so important to us because he put us all together again. That's what I told you. He put us together again. He is such a nice guy and very good manager, you know, and he put us all together. And obviously about Jonas and me, yeah, it's a friendship out, outside of the pitch, uh, you know, and, and inside the pitch, we just understand each other. I just said to him all that we used to joke because I said, Jonas, you have to be like a wall to me. Just I pass you the ball and just give me back. That's all you have to do in all the game. And we were laughing about that, you know, but he was, so, he was so good with me because he helped me so much. Obviously, going forward, I know he always is there behind me and always recover my this and as well. He was really tricky with the ball. He was really good and I really, really enjoyed playing on the left with him. Really, really enjoyed. Yeah, we could say that for that last couple of years. It was just a fantastic partnership. Um, early on in the championship, it was that when you decided that Newcastle were probably going to be promoted, did you feel very early on that you, Newcastle were just too good for this division? Or did you feel that very much one game at a time and then when we get promoted, we get promoted? Or was there a particular point in that season where you thought, yeah, I think we're going to be promoted now? No, we, we were a team that you have to think game by game. At the end, is what I told you, it looks like because we finished the league so easy at the end, but it wasn't easy at the end. It's like I say, it's a team that comes from the Premier League and look how many teams come from the Premier League to the Championship and they stay in the Championship, they don't promote. It's very difficult because so many players, they are not used to. You've been used to playing the top of the league and then you come to Championship and it's less quality players, yeah, but the football is more aggressive, more like the Premier League, but even worse in, in terms of kicking, long balls, this, that. So at the end, you're playing with taller players like this, like that. Well, like still, like still it is. Obviously, it's very good league. It's very good players on it. But obviously, the Premier League is better. That's why it's the first division. So so it, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But it's true that I believe after that game, we have that chat. And between all of us, I think we make a group with the manager. He make a group of all of us. And, and, and from the start, we believe that, listen, if we are all stick together and we are a team, we can, you know, obviously with you guys, with your help, with the fans, you know, because we know we didn't even have to say that because we, we know we count of you. I remember when we relegated, <laughs> I remember against Aston Villa, I remember like it was yesterday and, and, and it was 3000 fans, if I remember well, away from home. And it was full, the away, 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 away fans. And, and we relegate again and they start clapping. You know, like, don't worry, guys, don't worry, we will promote. Let's see. And you go, like, wow, these people, they don't, we don't fucking deserve it. You know what I mean? Like, we, we don't deserve. So let's give them what they deserve and, and try. And when we were in the championship, was that we were talking about that a lot as well. We were saying, listen, they don't deserve to be in this league. We, des we deserve to give them what they deserve. And, and we give our best. And I believe that that what it was, the unity and obviously the quality as well we have in the team. We have so many players that they passed the 15 goals mark. You know, like Sheila Meovi, Andy Carroll, Kevin, I think he was close there. It was so many, so many good players for the league. So I, th I believe, obviously, we had a good team to win it. But it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Yeah, of course. Obviously, the championship is it's ridiculous even now when you look at the championship. It's a difficult, difficult league. And you talk, you talk about, obviously, playing big matches, but that game against Nottingham Forest at St. James is where you get that goal in the last minute. Um, yeah. Describe that moment to us, Jose, because... It just seemed that the relief for all the fans, it was a great night, a sellout at St. James's. Was that one of the best moments in a black and white shirt for you? Oh, it's clever back here by Abby Abby. And then Enrique with a splendid goal to cap it all. St. James's Park goes wild. The Premier League beckons surely now for the Toon Army. Well, it couldn't have gone to a more fitting player on this pitch tonight because I said what I think about him I think he's the best player in the championship Jose Enrique attacking defending the fella can do the lot but never ever in your wildest dream would you say a composed goal scorer well no doubt obviously the best moment is when you promote because at the end it's not I just my own feeling is everyone is feeling you know what I mean at the end is 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 if football is not just us it's you fans is the is the club and everything so at the end promoting was the best moment you know and to be honest we have a great season so it was really good 
But obviously, that goal, as, as, a, as a, obviously just myself talking about how much I enjoy myself in that moment, it was great. Because to be honest, I wasn't playing very well that game. I was okay. And, and obviously, we were 1 0, uh, obviously, suffering a bit. We weren't playing very well either, the team in, in general. And obviously, all the sudden, to be honest, I, yeah, I did all well. And then the shooting, really, I shoot with my right foot and I say, whatever it goes, it goes. <laughs> You know, and, and it went in, and it went in, and obviously you could see my celebration, the sign, and it, it was beautiful because as well all the stadium start to sing my name, all my teammates start to jump in on me. That I nearly died at there, nearly died at there. <laughs> it was ten players on top of me. You know, I couldn't move. I said to Jonas, and Jonas was putting grass in my mouth as well. You know, and I, and I said, Jonas. I can't, I can't fucking breathe. He said, stop putting words <laughs> in my mouth. I can't fucking breathe. He was laughing. I said, I'm going to die here. You know, and, and it, it was funny. That, and it was nice. It was an amazing moment. To be honest, like you say, probably personal-wise, obviously, it was the best moment because, like you say, it was the 2 nil. We were promoting straight, straight away after that game. So it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And you could see, like you say, the enjoyment of the fans because we were suffering a bit. Everyone was a bit scared of like, oh, maybe no. And then, Boom, then second goal arrived a few minutes before the end, and everyone was like, wow, it's done. We are here now. So it was incredible, yeah, incredible. He's took a yellow card. Yeah. And that's the shame of it. But I think Chris Hewton may forgive him that yellow card. Mike Ashley celebrates. The whole of Newcastle celebrates, and they're standing by for an Easter party to celebrate Newcastle United's. Well, it is certain return to the Premier League. Well, you would think so, wouldn't you? We've got a booking for taking off his shirt out. You got into the championship team of the season that year, and it, that was no fluke, I would say. It was, you, did, you, you played really well. Obviously, I think you were injured for like three or four weeks, and obviously they brought Patrick Van Anhalt in, but you came straight back in the team, not a problem, and you didn't really, I, don't, I, could, I can't remember many bad games at all that season from, you have to be brutally honest, but... When you get promoted at the end of that season, Jose, um, you're back in the Premier League, it's fantastic. Did you feel that you were more ready for the Premier League or did you feel that the whole team were more ready for the Premier League? Because you, could, you argued that the, the team that actually got us relegated was a, a stronger team, which you've mentioned. Did you feel that this team was ready and was able to stay up? Because that had to be the, the first, you know, the first sole uh, target for the club. Well, obviously, you believe that at the end, I remember when they sacked Chris Hutton, the team was in a in a in a good position. It wasn't it wasn't bad. We weren't suffering to to relegate. Obviously, we knew we were going to suffer because that's the reality. You come back from the championship, and at the end, you don't have as much, you don't spend as much money as other clubs. And at the end, you know, is you're gonna suffer. But to be honest, we have the we were convinced that with Chris managing and few signings, we could we could stay easy, or not easy, obviously, but we could stay in the division because we need we have that confidence now from coming the season before and, and doing really well. And I believe we did with really well. Obviously, they saw Chris Hutton, that was obviously, in my opinion, I didn't understand it much. Maybe the, the club had other aspirations, our aspirations as a players, and I believe the fans the same. Obviously, you if you get there, you you think in something else. But the first target was to stay in the league. That's the reality because you just come up from the championship. And obviously, the year after you can think in something else and everything. But the first season to stay and and, and it's good as well for the fans and for the club to like, oh, we are a Premier League team now. We are staying in the league again. So I believe maybe they weren't in terms of of that the, with the target they weren't really real with it and that's why they sacked chris because i believe sack uh, chris was perfect for us to be honest and then obviously alan party i think it was who came no yeah and, about you, yeah and and alan did did good for us as well he was a good manager i really like him as a man and as a, as a manager as well he did really well for newcastle uh, but obviously when they sacked chris was a bit disappointed for all of us to be honest as a, as a player as well because we didn't really understand i believe obviously the clubs they take the decisions and obviously they own the club and and i accept that but obviously before you sack someone and everything at least reunite with the captains and the people from from there and speak with them and see their opinion as well because maybe you've seen something that 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 is not real and 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 the players we see it every day and chris I always say that, I, and even now I have a good relationship with him. He's he's a top man, and he's a top man. It's good. Yeah, you talk about that that season. Obviously, your last season at Newcastle. Um, before we touch about maybe the the day that uh, Chris Hutton gets sacked in Ireland, 
Pardew comes in and the games, the memorable games, obviously the Arsenal game, which I'll touch about in a second. But you experience a couple of big games against Sunderland, and that is the biggest game up in the northeast, Newcastle versus Sunderland. You were victorious a few times, um, obviously early on in your career, uh, played in the 2 0 win at St James's, but the 5 1 win at St James's has to be, obviously, a, a lot of Newcastle fans will say it's the best game they've ever been to, and those who you played that game as well. Did you feel the fans' importance of that game as soon as you were in the city centre, you were just driving around and you, you you meet people on the street? Did you feel straight away, we can't no. lose this game, we can't lose this game against Sunderland? No, when it's a, when it's a derby, uh, it's a special day. And against Sunderland, it's a, it's a lie, really, if you say it's, it's not a spe- Yeah, it's three points, like any other Premier League game, but it's a special feeling for everyone at the end. You could see in the tackles, you could see in the, in the atmosphere in the stadium, it's always incredible, but that game is something else. It's like, yeah, even if you play in that time, you play against Liverpool or United or City or whatever, yeah, it was amazing for Newcastle, but when you play against Sunderland, we're like, hey, respect, this is the, <laughs> you know, it's our city and, and, and it, was, it, it was good. And that game, wow was one of the best moments as well as a player because we, we killed in that game, 5-1. I remember it was Halloween that night. We played on the 31st, I believe, and yeah, we were yeah, up. We did, we yeah. Were, yeah, and we beat them. That's why I told you, I remember, like, because we have after party, the, the town was incredible, you know, with the fans. And <laughs> everywhere was incredible. And I'm not going to say what happened with Colochini and Jonas that night, but it was oh, so <laughs> funny, so, so funny. Oh, Colochini and Jonas, they got so drunk. I don't drink alcohol at all. So I never drink in my life. Uh, so I was driving them uh, there and they got so drunk that night and oh, I was crying laughing. I really have a good night because all the, and with a lot of players, we were a lot of players together because like, you know, at the end, I don't know how it is Newcastle now in that terms, but at the end, Newcastle have an area that is all uh, Floritas and all that. I don't know if it's still open. Uh, but in it's, that still time, open yeah. it's, it's still open, yeah. But well, in that time, it was all that area and, and, and we were there and the fans, obviously, after beating Sunderland five ones. It was incredible everywhere. The tweet are like, oh, drinks, don't worry, here, come here. It was incredible. <laughs> and, and I have a really nice night as well after the game because you could see how much enjoyment in the people and, and everything was so funny. And then seeing Colochini and Jonas so drunk as well, it was very, very funny. Very, very funny as well. Barton's corner, Williamson in there. No run! Jordy Joy! A pile of Jordy Joy! Gutierrez, Nolan, Gutierrez, Carroll, beyond Amiobi, Nolan, two, Sunderland search for a flag, Nolan's not waiting to ask, Newcastle have daylight between them and their neighbours, and it's Kevin Nolan again. Shola Amiobi with four previous derby goals, 3-0. The Magpies are flying. They'll take some catching now. Simpson face to face with Turner and Carroll against the crossbar. And it's coming up for Abby Obi. They've really had it so good. Martin with a waste and Abby Obi Nolan. Jordy Hatchick on Derby Day! A captain's hat-trick in the game that matters most. Newcastle 5, Sunderland 0. You are a special fan, that's a reality. Newcastle is one of the best fans in, in the UK. I have, I have been very lucky, to be honest, I always say that, to play for probably the two biggest fans in England, and that's definitely. Uh, obviously, Liverpool, you have to recognise in terms of it's more worldwide because obviously they're winning more titles in terms of history-wise. But Newcastle, when I lived there, it was beautiful. I loved the Newcastle, to be honest. It was a city that I loved. Uh, yeah, it rains a lot. It's really cold, yeah. But for me, I didn't care. You know, I really, really enjoy People are so friendly, so nice, you know, like the Jordis. So I really, really enjoy it. I really, really enjoyed living there and playing for Newcastle. Oh, fantastic to hear. Um, obviously, you've touched about Chris Hutton getting sacked and Alan Pardew coming in, Jose. And obviously, Newcastle fans weren't too happy about it, let's be brutally honest. They wanted to obviously see Chris Hutton carry on. Um, 
but there was a couple of big moments towards the back end of the season. Obviously, your uh, last season at Newcastle, and obviously that three-one win against Liverpool. Obviously, a team that you're going to end up playing for at the end of that season. But I think the big game. I think every Newcastle fan can remember where they were for this game. That is the Arsenal four-four game. Um, Andy Carroll had just been sold to Liverpool for thirty-five million pounds. Arsenal ended up being 4 0 up before half time, or I think you probably even earlier than that. And you're just thinking, where do we go from here? Again, similar question to this Leighton Orion one. At half time, was, what, was, there anything, was there anything different said, or did you just think, can we just try and win the second half and then just give ourselves a little bit of pride? What, what was the overriding emotion at half time and, and then after the game as well? Yeah, what well, you just say, I believe everyone was mad really mad with ourselves because it was our mistake. We were really mad with ourselves because obviously you can lose, you can expect to lose against Arsenal at that time, or, uh, but obviously not for me in the first half and you could expect a higher score even in the second half. So we, we were in the dressing room really mad, everyone, you know, like obviously not fighting between each other because at the end was everyone's mistake, but listen, yes, yeah, it's a fucking wake up, you know, like, we cannot, yeah, we, we lose him 4 nil, but we cannot lose 8 nil or 7 nil. It's, it's not possible. We're making it ridiculous here and not just for us, for the fans as well here. What's happened? Let's wake up. And we went to the second half with nothing to lose, really, to say, listen, let's go for it and see what happens. And obviously it happens what, what everyone knows now, obviously, the 4-4. The Tio Tegolda, obviously, I hope he, he rests in peace as well. He was so important for, for us as well. As a player, he was really good as well. A nice man as well. And, and I remember celebrating the goal, the first one as well with him. I remember he running like crazy. I, I, if, if you open the door of San Jensen's, I probably he'll still running that way. You know, you were <laughs> celebrating that crazy. It was, it was beautiful. And, and, and it was a beautiful game because obviously it was Arsenal. Arsenal is a massive team. They were playing really well. The first half, they kill us for nil. And I believe come back from all of that, you could see the spirit of the team with, with, with the fans, you know, at the end, the fans as well. It, it's good because they didn't give up. We started the second half and I remember from the start, they were like, oh, come on, guys, come on. You know, like, come on, wake up, fucking up, wake up. We can't lose this game, this, that. And with all your help and between us, we, we changed the game and, and we finished 4-4 and it was beautiful. One of the best games I've been involved as well. It was beautiful to check off. After 4-0, made that comeback is incredible. Stoppage is left. Here comes Barton's delivery. It's a teasing one. It's headed away by Arsenal. Check to Oh! 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 Boom! Boom! Check, check the room! What a strike! What a goal! What a comeback! What a game! There are no words to describe it! Check to lift the room of St James's Park with the most sensational strike you will ever see. What a game! What a team! What a moment! It's Arsenal 4, Newcastle United 4. Was that the best game you played in a Newcastle shirt, or as in just like the best game you've ever been involved with? Like I know you've probably played for Liverpool and you've played in Spain, but was that the best game you've ever been involved in? In terms of don't give up, probably yes. Obviously, four nil at half time, it was incredible, you know. And then you you finish four four against Arsenal as well. That you're not talking about against any other team, it will be incredible as well. But against Arsenal and the way they they kill us the first half because they destroy us completely the first half. And then finish 4-4 and, and now I even remember even better because of what I said, you know, Tiote, Tiote scored the goal, you know, and he's not, he's not here with us as well. So it's even more special, you know, because everyone will remember this game even more because of him. And, and he deserved that. He bought a goal. I don't think he even believed he scored a goal in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful, yeah. Of course. Um, obviously, towards the back end of that season, there was rumours in the North East that obviously you were a player that a lot of teams wanted because you had an exceptional season for Newcastle in the Premier League. And you ended up going to Liverpool. Before you ended up going to Liverpool, I would say there was a, obviously a, a, a tweet, which I'm not going to discuss too much about. I don't think we need to. But all I, say, all I will say about it is that even to this current day, you, you have something, you, you have a point, don't you? Because the ambition wasn't there from the club and you thought, you know what, maybe it's time for a different move, a different challenge. And when Liverpool come calling, Jose, as much as it probably would have been a difficult decision to leave Newcastle, did you feel that you were ready for that, that next step in your career? 
Well, I'm going to ask you your first, your first question. First of all, I believe it was a mistake from me to put that. Obviously, I believe the way I was thinking, so many players were thinking and so many fans were thinking the same way. Uh, but you as a player, you cannot, you cannot do that. I did it through madness. Obviously, it's no excuse for it. It was a mistake. But I did it through madness and because through that I loved I loved the club and, and I didn't like the way the club was going in that in that way because obviously you're selling your best players you, at the end to replace them is not the best. So obviously I did it in a in a mad way really. But sometimes social media is dangerous and you should then get your madness and write it down in the social media because at the end everyone can read it and then goes everywhere. And in that time, obviously, I was a very important player for the team and, and people will listen to me and, and it wasn't right for me to, to, to do that. That was a mistake for me because at the end, it's the club's it's decision and, and they can do what they want. So the players they shouldn't get involved with these things. But obviously, I did. Um, and then, obviously, Liverpool, in, while it was happening, they came. It was a difficult decision in terms of personal-wise because I was happy in Newcastle and it was hurting me you know, seeing the club doing what they were doing. But at the same time, it's like you said, at the end, it was a big step. You go to a club that they won five Champions League. They were spending that summer, they spent 100 million in the January transfer window. They spent Andy Carroll and Luis Suarez as well. So you say, listen, I'm going to a team that obviously they want to fight for titles as well. Uh, so it was a no-brainer, you have to be honest with you, in, in terms of that, because you go to a team that in terms of titles, History-wise, is 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 in a different in a different way. It's the, it's the way it is, you know. And so it wasn't difficult in that way. But personal-wise, was difficult to move away because I was happy in Newcastle. It was four years that obviously at the start was difficult. But like in any job, I believe, you know, when you start, it's difficult. Sometimes you don't know the people, you don't know the place. You know, you can put that in any job, really. No, as a footballer, it's a, any job, you start somewhere else. I'm sure when you start, what you're doing right now, you were scared maybe, and you were like, oh, <laughs> you know, that easy, you know. And then obviously now you're comfortable, you're doing for a while. So this is the same, you know. But I was really happy. It's a place that I will always be grateful. The fans, they were always been amazing to me. Even today, they are amazing to me. They get it wrong when I say my team is Liverpool, and it is. You know, I love Liverpool because I have a special feeling. I'm playing for the Legends as well there, so and they've been supporting me so much with my with my tumor. But I will always love Newcastle. Newcastle is a place that it was very beautiful for me. It was a change change in my career. They they helped me to to adapt to England as well, and they were lovely to me. The people always, and they still lovely to me. So I will always have good work for me. If I if a player that I have. Asked me about Newcastle that I already have a player who asked me about Newcastle. I said to him to go there. So even with the owner from now that I know people is not very happy with him with McCasley and everything, still the club is still incredible. The city is incredible. The fans are incredible. So I would recommend it to any to any player.